Hi, welcome to this video. I'm going to show you a Google Analytics dashboard that you could check every week, if not every day. All right, from working in a 22 person startup to my current role working in digital analytics on the e-commerce team at a Fortune 500, I've used dashboards based on the one I'm going to show you. This Google Analytics dashboard is useful for any size project or business. So with Google Analytics, I want my dashboard to give me a quick overview of my web property of interest. The dashboard structure I use is based on the ABCs of web analytics, courtesy of Avinash Kushek, who is a digital marketing evangelist for Google. Here's a page from his website where he describes a digital marketing and measurement model. If we scroll down a bit, we see that A stands for acquisition, which refers to how traffic reached the web property and how much of it there is. B is for behavior, which refers to user behavior and how users interact with the web property. C stands for conversions, which tells us the outcomes of the user journey, as in whether they converted or if they left without engaging. We'll go to analytics.google.com and sign in if you haven't already. Make sure you're in the reporting view that you want to be in. So once the page loads, click on the drop down menu at the top for accounts and reporting views and select the reporting view you want. Here we'll use the Google Analytics demo account which pulls data from the Google merchandise store. The first page you see is the home page of that reporting view. As you can see, it provides you with a nice looking dashboard with all kinds of charts and data tables. Based on what most people track in their Google Analytics accounts, I think Google has done a great job creating a dashboard that probably appeals to most people accessing your Google Analytics account. It, as you can see, there's a good amount of information here, but again, depending on the maturity of your web product, some of these widgets might be more useful to you than others. Of course, all of this data seems pretty important, but if we just launched an, a website, for example, we're probably more concerned with the amount of traffic rather than the time of day that your users are visiting which is still pretty cool. But you can only focus on so many things at one time. So for the dashboard, I might not be interested in some of these widgets or data points. Typically, I set up the dashboard reading from top to bottom. This way, I'm only scrolling in one direction. So to create our own dashboard, we'll do that by clicking on customization in the left navigation menu and dashboards in the dropdown. Click create and let's select blank canvas. Simply name this overview and click create dashboard. It automatically brings up this window or modal so you can create your first widget for your dashboard. For the UX folks out there, that's a good user experience because you're not left to your own devices wondering what to do next. So I'll just call this first widget sessions, leave it set to metric and add the sessions metric. You can link to an actual Google, Google Analytics report if you please. For this example, I'll link to the audience overview report because that's where you can find the sessions metric in their out of the box reports. Save the widget and you'll see it there in your dashboard. Let's click on add widget and continue adding the rest of the widgets to this dashboard.
have the dashboard here, so let's go through the layout. Unfortunately, you can't label a group of widgets or specific sections of the dashboard, but you can tell what each of these widgets convey by their respective titles. So at the top of the dashboard, we have the acquisition widgets that tell us characteristics about the traffic that arrives on the property. How much traffic there is, how traffic is trending over this time frame, and where it's coming from as far as the web channels of the traffic sources and the countries of the users. The behavior widgets tell us how users are engaging, whether the traffic is staying around with the bounce rate, which is the rate at which users leave the site after viewing the first page without any interaction. If they are staying around, their average session duration and the number of pages viewed per session over this time frame, as well as any actions that users might take while on the web property. Seeing data for these events in this widget does require adding some customized tracking with a tag manager or developer support. The conversion or outcome widgets tell us how the user journey ends. Now, you'll also have to define what a conversion or goal completion is in order to populate the data here. But these widgets show whether your users are achieving a desired outcome or goal with the conversion rate, which you can set as an e-commerce conversion rate or other conversion rates if you don't have an e-commerce component. There are other widgets for how goal completions are trending over the time frame, traffic channels and their respective number of goal completions or conversions along with the conversion rate, and the device categories with their respective number of conversions and conversion rates. You can change goal completions to transactions if you have an e-commerce site, as the last widget shows revenue and transactions over time. The difference between goal completions and transactions, however, is for another video. So that's the dashboard I like to use. I also use this for small projects that I'm working on, not just web properties for work. However, this isn't a one-size-fits-all solution, but this should still give you guidance on how to configure your own overview dashboard. Your dashboard configuration depends on what kind of web property you have, the maturity or stage of your product, and what's important for you to track. I hope you found that useful, and if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and share. See you in the next video.